Today on Forbes, this billionaire immigrant is racing Elon Musk to connect your phone from space. Last September, a crowd of seasoned spectators gathered at Cape Canaveral, Florida, to watch as SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket took flight for the 373rd time. But it wasn't carrying yet another of Elon Musk's Starlink satellites to join the 7100 plus he has already circling Earth. On board instead were five satellites from AST Space Mobile, a tiny Starlink rival that SpaceX has derided as a, quote, meme stock in regulatory filings with the federal government. Each satellite was equipped with a 700-square-foot antenna that would unfold in orbit. An early step in establishing a network, AST hopes will someday best the incumbent mocking it. The size of these antennas, and the even larger 2,400-square-foot version that will succeed them, are key to CEO and founder Abel Avellan's plan to win a new market. Satellite internet beamed directly to your phone. In contrast to SpaceX, which uses thousands of satellites to connect residences, businesses, vehicles, and even the White House to the internet, AST's super-large antennas should give it global coverage with just 90 satellites. The company plans to launch 60 into orbit by the end of 2026. The goal is to keep cell phones connected when out of range of a tower. You'd be able to make calls even when hiking in a remote area or from a boat miles offshore. Until recently, that required expensive satellite phones with special hardware. This isn't Starlink's main business. Its $12.3 billion in revenue largely comes from providing internet to fixed base stations attached to homes and businesses, not mobile phones. Nor is it the vision of Jeff Bezos' Project Kuiper, a direct Starlink competitor, which launched the first 27 of a planned 3,200-plus satellites in late April. But Starlink isn't totally ignoring the phone business. It's currently in beta testing with T-Mobile to let users text on their phones via Starlink when they don't have any bars, giving it an early lead over AST. It also has thousands of satellites to AST's five, and Musk's insider status with the Trump administration could prove important in the heavily regulated telecom business. Starlink's staggering $350 billion valuation dwarfs Midland, Texas-based AST's market cap of around $8.7 billion. Still, AST has a shot at the emerging market for a satellite-based mobile cell plan, with a potentially substantial payoff. The big opportunity is not off-grid connectivity for Europeans and North Americans, but providing internet to the more than 2.6 billion people, largely in the developing world, who struggle to get online at all. Most of them can't afford Starlink. A basic base station starts at $350, then it's around $80 per month for residential Wi-Fi. AST's pricing is still largely theoretical, but the startup hopes it can deliver for just a few extra dollars a month on a cell phone bill. That's a compelling proposition. The 54-year-old Avellan says that when it comes to broadband, quote, the cheapest and most efficient way is through your phone. Skipping out on building new cell towers entirely could mean major cost savings for the telecoms companies as well, if they can offer satellite internet in markets that don't yet justify that investment. Deutsche Bank, which is not an AST investor, estimates that the company's revenues could top $370 million in 2026 once its commercial service is up and running, and surpass $5 billion by 2030, with far less capital expenditure than Starlink will need to keep launching thousands of satellites. The big obstacle for both companies is the basic physics of satellite communication, namely that you need a direct line of sight from a satellite to your phone to get a signal. Starlink, Project Kuiper, and multiple Chinese firms plan to tackle this by flooding the zone with thousands of small, cheap satellites in low Earth orbit which hops signals between them to maintain steady connections with ground-based dishes. The antenna in your phone is a lot smaller, making it harder to get bandwidth to do more than text. But AST's satellites are outfitted with antennas at least 50 times the size of Starlink's. It's a tricky feat of engineering. The centimeters thick antennas require assembly in clean rooms to be securely packed into satellites at launch. Then they're carefully unloaded again in orbit. It's much more complicated than a Starlink satellite, and each AST satellite costs about $21 million compared to around $1.2 million to build each Starlink bird. But the result is true broadband connectivity. 
AST's five satellites have successfully made video calls with phones on Verizon, Vodafone, Rakuten, and AT&T networks. ASTs have a longer lifespan, too, requiring replacement every 10 years compared to 5 to 7 years for Starlink. For full coverage, check out Alex Knapp's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.